This is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm here talking today with Mary. Hey, how's it going? Great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Why don't, why don't you introduce yourself, who you are, where you are? Yep. So my name is Mary Thompson, and I am in, well, I always say Columbia, South Carolina, but it's really Lexington, a little suburb outside of it. So that's who I am and where I'm at. <laughs> and, and so what do you do for a living? Yeah, sorry about that. So I am a, so my official title is the Dynamics Angel Guru for Cooper Perry. And what I do is I help um, kind of in a partner to partner channel and help other partners trying to get into the business central, you know, resale area. Um, mm -hmm. I help them get started. Basically, they can have like no skills or, or not, not necessarily no skills, but, you know, new, new to that space and not have to know the software and product. And we help them kind of get started and get them going. So that's, that's a lot of what I do. Well, it's in, and you're also one of our newest MVPs. So congratulations again on that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Very excited. So what kind of things that you do, do you help people with or what are people most interested in these, the partners, what are they looking to get started up in and working with? Well, you know, it's funny. I would say it, that my my MVP, you know, award and like my day job are, are quite different. I always say that like, you know, I'm a, a functional consultant or, you know, in this P2P channel by day and then like I moonlight with the power platform. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, so I guess in the in the partner to partner channel, a lot of them are just trying to maybe get started. I mean, you know, business central is a pretty quick and easy process to, you know, get started and going with, especially for SMBs and with COVID, it's been particularly important to help um, these companies, you know, maybe go from some silent systems where they really didn't have that SaaS ability. Um, and, you know, they were just having people at home and they couldn't do anything. So trying to help them, you know, kind of get started and, and help these partners. Um, literally just had another nice, nice resale to their, uh, to their current product mix. But uh, like I said, in my, in my free time, I am super passionate about the power platform and kind of helping upskill, um, you know, whether it be the Twitter community or a lot here in my local community and trying to help spread that, you know, concept and knowledge. Because I would say that the tech forefront is not particularly um, rampant here in South Carolina. So um, I'm super passionate about trying to, to help other people see that there's a, there's a lot more out there and jobs that pay a lot more. So well, yeah, that is an interesting, yeah, so I, I was thinking about this before we were talking too, it's like, when was the last time I was in South Carolina? I think it's been, uh, I've been to North Carolina, of course, you know, um, RTP, plenty with work. I was yeah. in uh, Atlanta a lot, did a lot of travel out there for years and, uh, you know, but I just kind of, you know, skip over the state. I, I've driven through parts a couple of times, but I mean, that's a great point is, is uh, more and more, I think, especially because of you know, COVID where businesses that never thought that they would be able to do the support, the work from home model are now rethinking, like, why do we need all this expensive office space Absolutely. for a lot of these roles that can be 100% remote? And I, I mean, it's yet to be seen how this is going to impact economies. Right, right. Well, I think uh, I can't even remember some of the numbers I saw, but it, like you said, it's like the overhead to hold an office space is astronomical and it's taking that digital transformation process. I can't even remember. It was like maybe 42% of jobs would be, they call it eradicated or, you know what I mean, can be, yeah. be digitally, um, can, can go away with digital transformation. But I like to really think of it and in, in empower and encourage people that it's not that your job is going to go away but that you're going to be able to use that skill set um, on what your brain really wants it to use. You know what I mean? Like when you're not having to do all of like the mundane, you know, aspects, then, then take somebody that works and lives with that data. So maybe purchasing, for example, when, when you can use like AI and automatically have your invoices be sucked out of your um, email and, you know, essentially an OCR functionality and then, mm -hmm. you know, upload it into the system. Um, I mean, anyone can go in there and key those in, right? But but now you're taking people that have done this for a really long time, and they know these vendors, they've got this really intimate relationship with them. And so now they can actually, you know, spend their time maybe building 
building pricing relationships, right? There's a lot of, a lot of, you know, good that can go into that and getting like the best pricing for your company. Maybe you get some special favors done and cause you, cause you have this time to like network, right? Within right. that channel, opposed to just entering the invoices or, you know, you know, the best way to, to get something done and, and you can focus on that and, and maybe help other people as well instead. So well, we've seen that shift that's happened within, uh, you know, the technology platforms when you're when most of the experts in the space are so focused on keeping servers up and running and are people getting, you know, access to it, you're not able to spend the time and think about once you have access to what are you actually doing with that the, the platform. So right. yeah, it is a, it is a shift in the way of thinking you still need to have people that understand the technology and make sure stuff is running to make sure the services are running. But it also, they have to have more of that business understanding. So it's been, uh, I think it's been a shift for a lot of IT pros, certainly, and developers to think more about, you know, the actual business application of the things that they're building. I like to think that they were thinking of some of those things beforehand, but the reality mm-hmm. is that, you know, when, I mean, it's just like, it's like moving from that waterfall development method to a more iterative process. Right. You, know, you don't just go and think, hey, we're going to go and build this. And in the next three to six months, you build it and then come back and deliver it. You have to iterate in real time, get the feedback and refine. And it's usually much different looking uh, at the end of the three months than it was where you thought at the beginning right. of the process. Right. And, you know, I kind of come from a unique perspective because I've really only been in the tech world for like two years, right? And before that, um, I was an end user in the system. Or, well, so I was an end user in Dynamics AX. So um, I sat in those roles and I helped start um, several like SMBs or was the office manager and took care of, you know, the wore many different hats and many small businesses and some larger organizations. So that was that's my stronger suit, right? It's not necessarily the, the configuration. I mean, that's, that's the tricky part for me. But, um, but I realized that there was a really great space for me in consulting because it's very easy, what like you're saying, some pro devs and those types of um, individuals to come in and say, this is how the system is supposed to work. Um, you need to follow these directions. Well, in real life, people aren't going to read that handbook, right? Like, it's like, oh, I broke it. What do I do now? The answer isn't, this is what the rule book said. No, you got to be, you know what I mean? You have to understand that, like, you got to get creative and understand how to pass, like, how to work with that change management and have that empathy to their, like, day-to-day life. So, um, so that's what I really like about consulting and where some of my, you know, experiences come from. And then it's like, I've realized that if I can do that, right, like, I'm not the only end user uh, that, that can make this transition. And even if you didn't use, you know, AX, it's being able to transfer that, uh, industry, outside industry, whatever terminology you want to use that and put that into consulting. And I think that's where things like the power platform and these um, citizen developers, right, really mm-hmm. come in to shine right now. It's because you don't have to have those tech skills. You have to have like the business knowledge or your business process concepts. And the passion to go and do it. It's, it's interesting. I've done a, you know, a couple interviews just recently with some very large enterprise customers. And the one of the common patterns in some of these businesses and I've talked to many others as well but this just in the last uh, you know two months with these interviews where they started to develop a like a champion program so they were intentionally trying to monitor and track those people that kind of rose up from within the ranks and yeah. and then and then to support them and say what else can we do and they ask them like what else can we do to help you do more to do better? And, but you find these people that naturally, uh, you know, want to go and solve these business problems Mm -hmm. and, and then help others. And I, I always think of it like the, like a manufacturing process. It's all about the efficiency, you know, the the quality, what you're improving quality and you're, you're constantly fine tuning the process to get the product through more of the product at a higher quality through. Yeah. And we need to think of our organizations in the same way. Again, it's not just about keeping those servers or services up and running, but now how do we better use this? That's what digital yeah. transformation is about. How do we get more out of this so we can double our output in mm-hmm. 200% you know, efficiency, uh, increase productivity, however that's defined. Uh, you start to look at these 
you know, that the, the manufacturing process within your own organization and say, where can we make improvements here and then start to iterate? Yeah. And I think that there's a human concept in that as well, right? So like, not only are you making, you know, your business processes more efficient, but the, the personal satisfaction and, and so like people's happiness, right? When you're truly invested and know that somebody's invested in you, like your, your overall whole being at work is completely different. And when you have super satisfied you know, employees that they're happy, then, then again, it's just like this, you know, win-win type of situation and, and being able to empower your employees, not only empowers your business, you know, concepts, but also just in general makes for, for happier people. And I don't know, I guess I'm really corny and I'm all about like being positive and, and I think that there's so much to that. We spend so much time at work that if you can, if you can have a happier, you know, workplace, then you're also probably going to stick around longer. So I think it's pretty, pretty awesome concept. Well, having, I don't know about you, I mean, having worked in some organizations that were uh, more on the toxic side of things. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. It's, uh, no, I know what you mean. It's, it's uh, when you have, uh, I don't know how to describe it. When you're, we're on, on a team where you're, everybody's performing well, where you understand each other's roles, you work well together, yeah. people are happy doing, doing that. Um, I wish sometimes it lasted longer. Something happens when your favorite people leaves, they move up, yeah. they move on kind of things and you, you have to reshuffle. But um, I mean, I often say that you know, organizations that are good at managing and handling the change, finding people who are passionate, that can do their jobs well, that are willing to learn, but that mm -hmm. are also good at change when it inevitably yeah. happens are the ones that are going to be successful long term. That's one of the things that I really love about Cooper Perry and that I've noticed has been significantly different. Like I've, I've worked a bunch of different places and it's one of the first times I've ever felt like truly valued and appreciated. And I'm like, what do you mean that like my, I feel, I feel good when I go to work, you know? And, and even at that, it was like, um, they were so amazing when I first started. And then I had some, uh, I'll call it PTSD from, from some other jobs. And so, you know, really suffered from imposter syndrome to the point where I was like really just getting in my own way. And, um, and so I was just kind of honest about that with them. And like, man, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to lose my job, but I just don't know what to do. And they've just been so supportive and like, no, you know, you are great. We'll get you to, you know, you remember that like, let's, let's not worry about what's happened in the past. This is who you are now. And I'd say in the last couple of months, I, um, I don't know, I just, I, I feel great. That's all I can say is I feel really great and really like comfortable and satisfied for, for the first time in a really long time where it's not about the money. It's about, it's about the culture and, and being, you know, happy where you're at. Well, so now that you've, uh, you've earned the Microsoft MVP and your head is swelling and, and are, do people like get out of the way in the hall now and they see, well, I guess we're all working from home. It's, you know, yeah, no, home, no, my dog still like goes crazy, but no, you know, I mean, it's so, even at that, they're like so sweet. They're like, let's do an interview. And then we're going to put you on the thing. And I'm like, okay. Like, yeah. I'm like, well, really, I think the cooler thing about me being as MVP is like, now we can build more MVPs, like internally, y'all are way smarter than me, you just have to do some, some blogs and some videos, like, let's get out in the user groups, and, and let's, let's make a whole tribe of MVPs here. So. Yep. Uh, that's the right approach. Well, I always say that, you know, the MVPs, and it's not 100% of us, but I would say that the vast majority, 99.9% .9 of us, we'd be doing this, whether or not we had the MVP status, we you know, are, are passionate about community and, yeah. and uh, helping people and, and learning and sharing our work, being yeah. transparent in the stuff that we do. So yeah, that's, that's consistent. Now it's, it's interesting, like you're over on the dynamics side of the house. Mm -hmm. It's, it's interesting to see the rapid growth in that community. Like I came up, I was initially a SharePoint MVP okay. and had this rabid passionate group of SharePoint MVPs. Uh, yeah. But now the office apps and services side, which include all of offices and everything. So we're seeing more and more of data platform and mm -hmm. business solutions MVPs on the dynamic side of the house, which is it's about time. It's exciting to see growth on that side of things. And of course, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, you know partnering a, a across the once you're an MVP, you're in the system. There are people that float across multiple areas. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot more that you can tap into as well within that network. So 
pretty cool. Yeah, it's no, pretty I cool think, stuff. I, I mean, I'm already like flooded with the emails. I can't even necessarily like keep up yet. Um, you know, so I'm like, I'm like, oh, I need to get some rules in here. Um, so, so yeah, I, I showed up to like a few, I don't know if this is nice or not, but I showed up to like a few meetings and I'm like, man, there sure aren't very many women in here. So I think, I think that we need to be passionate, or I guess one of my passions is going to be to like really, really like increase that. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to say anything, but <laughs> You know, I, I think that's a, there's an open dialogue around that. I think everybody recognizes that and we need to, uh, you know, do a better job of, of reaching out and changing that up. And, you know, I, I, it's, uh, I've got four kids, one daughter, three sons, and my, you know, two of my kids, my daughter, my oldest went into the STEM side of things and much smarter human being than I am. And I'm just very excited to see two of my kids go into technology. She's hard sciences. She was a microbiology major. And then, got her master's and, and, you know, I, again, much smarter than I am, but um, it, it's, it's exciting to see, you know, that to, to, to see her go out and take advantage of all the opportunities that are out there and things are really just opening up for her, but yeah, uh, yeah we definitely need to see more of that within the Microsoft community. Well, I think, I think it's coming and I'm thinking that I'm going to like reach out to some people and like, maybe, maybe we can have like a, like an MVP girls night out, like meet up or something and, and kind of rally around each other and see, see what we can do to help spread that. So. Well, there's also, I don't know if you, are you a member of IAMCP? Do you know I what that is? No, too many acronyms. I have no yeah, clue. It's, it's the International Association of Microsoft Channel Partners. So IAMCP mm -hmm. and it's IAMCP.org. Uh, and they sponsored the Women in Technology organization as well, which is yep. all over the world. Yep. And uh, yeah, so I helped, uh, I, I was the president of the Seattle chapter for three and a half years, and we helped um, pilot and launch WIT in, inside of uh, IAMCP out in, uh, when I was in Redmond. So, yeah. you know, just outside of Microsoft campus. And wow. uh, so that's something you should definitely go take a look at. Yeah, I will. Thanks for that. Yep. Well, I really appreciate your time and talking today, connecting, getting to know you. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And so if people want to find out more about you, get in touch with you. What are the best ways to reach you out on the social networks or however? Yeah, yeah. so find me on Twitter. I'm pretty active on there. It's a very original name, MM0, I don't even remember, 090511. That's what it is. Oh, yeah, that, that is very personalized, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was like my maiden name and my birthday is really what it comes down to, and then my favorite number. So it's MM090511 on Twitter, or you can find me at Mary Thompson on LinkedIn. I've got a big pink background that says World Map. So that's how you can find me. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, Mary, for your time, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.